Yes, hello. Let's see if we can record this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. We are about to start. Let's see. We are about to start. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? And uh, I'm happy to meet you again. And uh, yeah, there's no need to present myself. But uh, what I'm going to talk about today is related to something which was a challenge for me. And um, it is related to choosing what you will study in the future. I was challenged by that question because I found that that... Uh, in uh, coming years, uh, things will not be the same and certain careers will no longer be producing enough income to help people to survive or to live. So it will be very complicated for them. And that is the reason why it is, it is complicated to know what you will study. Let me check the sound. Yes, the sound sounds check, check. Yes, it is checking the sound. Mm -hmm. That is checking the sound and we were checking the sound. So I was telling you that, uh, yeah, in coming the, the years, things would not be the same and certain careers that we used to work in will no longer be producing any income. So that is the worry. And when you start, you want to study something, you need to check those things before you, you make a choice, before you decide to go to study something. And this became because I was uh, facing such yeah critical moment where I had to make a choice between what I have to study. To give you an example, there are careers uh, that have uh, been uh, no longer were producing or being a kind of profession as they used to because of what we are having today. There is something like, uh, let me give you an example, like photography. Photography is no longer what it used to be because many people now they are having their own smartphone. They can take up, they can take pictures whenever they want. So that they re reduced the amount of people who are involved in that prof profession and the income was reduced. That is one. Also, there is journalism. Journalism, you see all these channels. There are uh, about millions of channels, even uh, billions of channels, YouTube channels, which are focusing on medias and forming people. And that changed the aspect of journalism. So the profession have been hit a little bit. So that is another thing. There is typing. I can show you. There are children who were born in 2000, 2000 uh, 2004, 2003, who don't know what typing is because that thing is no longer is not they see them typing on phone or on, on laptop but i have never seen a typing let me show you how typing was used to look like so that you can have an idea uh, sorry for this let me remove this so that you can see typing the way it used to be like so you will know that things are changing things are changing and careers are getting uh, disappearing certain careers are no longer yes this is what typing used to be uh -huh. mm -hmm. this is this is what typing used to be this is a typing machine long time ago but it is no longer it is, it is no longer the case because there is everyone has a typing machine on his phone or on on her radio on her laptop so this is what typing used to be and it was a profession but now it is no longer a profession everyone can type yes it is a profession certain people they are making money busy making money but not in a fashion or in a style that we used to do that so those are things which made me think about the future of today and uh, I started asking chat GPT I started I started with Google but Google was not giving me some information so and Google most of the time to give so many so many so many 
so many documents that you have to read and process. So that is not a good way to, to get the answer. So, but Google, it has something called BARD. We will see about it, BARD. But we started with chat GPT to see if chat GPT can give us answer. So I asked chat GPT for how long will the lower income population need the organic product? Why did I ask product, organic product? Because organic product is the base of everything. It is uh, where we fetch our energy. It is how we live. And uh, that is an indirect way of asking how long will be organic? Will human be organic? But it didn't give me an answer because maybe I didn't give it a, a hint or I didn't let it know that I know too much. So it kept its silence and it didn't give me any answer. So I had to change the question so that I can see if it can give me more answer. So that is a trick that I saw from YouTube that if you want you, uh, chat GPT or BART or those AI to give you an answer, sometimes you have to trick it so that it can give you an answer. You see progressively how I changed the question, the question until I got to what I have. So if I say we will be no longer be organic, the whole system will be changing. If human being will no longer be organic, then everything will change. What we eat will no longer, what, we, what we'll be eating will no longer be what we used to eat. And uh, the marketplace, what we supply, uh, cloth and food and uh, houses and everything will no longer be the same because we are no longer organic. So that I have asked in another way, I said, uh, have GMO have another chemical component which are not organic? Let me repeat the question. Have GMO uh, have, have, yeah, we should put half, mm -hmm. have GMO, half, mm -hmm. have GMO, have another, mm -hmm. another chemical component which are not organic, other chemical component which are not organic. Why aren't them considered organic? That is a way of asking because we suspect that, me, I suspect that this GMO that we eat are not are not established in order to increase the, the quantity of food. Normally, what it is said is that GMO are produced to produce are produced so that they can respond to the high demand of food. But it is a very seen that GMO are not the only solution to food production. Okay, also GMO, they resist ag against diseases, but that is not convincing. It is not convincing that uh, GMO are a solution to food production. GMO seems to be having another agenda, which is like replacing the human uh, the human component in the body elements, especially placing more metals related element into the body so that human can be a little bit different from what they used to be in 100 years to come. That is an assumption. So it didn't give me such an answer, which I expected. And I continue, continued to dig down deeper. And I asked, are GMO offering an autonomy? <laughs> Let me ask again. Are GMO affecting the anatomic structure and physiology of human being? What will be the impact of GMO product on human being in 100 years? Again, it didn't give any answer because maybe it is not true. Maybe there's there's nothing as a worry like that. But people, why people, they avoid those food? Why people, they prefer to buy organic, which are expensive? Why? So I continued. I, I, ask, I asked, is AI able to cover all the profession of human? How long will it take before AI become dominant in the world? Show me how it is prog progressively planned that AI is covering every aspect of life on earth. List at least all professions that you know which AI will cover efficiently. So it gave me a list, but it is a little, it is not enough. It is for a child, but it can mean a lot because it is global. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that is true. It might be gave me a global ways of explaining things, but this is what it gave me. This is the list. We'll not go through it because it is not giving me the answer that I, I want. So we'll see how I change it again so that I can change it again the question so that can give me another way. I said, update me about self-driving taxi in USA now. 
that is another question which is now changing so that we can see what gives and let's start now reading as of my last knowledge update in january 22, 2022 that is a weakness for chat gpt self-driving taxi were undergoing testing and development in several city like in united states uh -huh. sorry in united states states companies such were such as waymo Chris and other autonomous vehicle developers were actively testing their autonomous taxi services. Here is an update on the status of self-driving taxi in USA. So this is what they are telling. Mm -hmm. Let's see it the, here below. Please note that the state of self-driving taxi is continuous evolving and development have likely occurred since my last update. Progress in this field depends on regulatory approval, technological advancement, and the successful navigation of technical and safety challenge. To get the most current information on safe driving taxi in USA, I recommend checking the latest news and announcement from companies involved in autonomous, in autonomous vehicle development and relevant regulatory bodies. So not yet, we are still going, because now let me ask Bart and we see what Bart will tell us. Uh, it is the same question to different to different AI. This was chat GPT. Now we are asking Bard and see what it gives. Update me about self-driving taxi in USA now. As of August 2023, self-driving taxi are operating in three USA, USA cities, Phoenix, Arizona, and San Francisco, California, and Austin, Texas. Yes, Phoenix, Arizona, San Francisco in California, and Austin in Texas, three cities. Why more cruise and more and emotional and emotional are comp companies currently offering these services. Why Waymo is the most experienced self-driving taxi company having launched its service in Phoenix 2020. Cruise launched its commercial service in San, Fra San Francisco in 2022, and emotional launched its service in Austin 2023. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it is almost the same. Now let me change again the question so that we can see if it can give more. Give me a progressive plan with timeline of how self-driving cars will replace normal drivers in order to avoid traffic congestion and accident. If I would have not added traffic congestion and accident, it would have given me another thing because it doesn't want to reveal the plan because this it is still under discussion and certain things are happening but not revealed to the public. I don't know why. So that is how I tricked it and it gave me this answer. Here is a progressive plan with timeline of how self-driving cars will replace normal drivers in order to avoid traffic congestion and accidents. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it is. Yes, 2023 to 2025, two years from now, self-driving taxi become more widely available in major US cities. Self-driving delivery vehicle begin operating in limited scale. You see the importance of two years, it is widely available in major US cities. What is it? Self-driving taxis. Uh -huh. And if you check the media, these things are happening. The third, it is government and businesses begin to invest heavily in safe driving cars and infrastructure, such as dedicated lane and charging stations. Hey, very, very serious. Now, from 26 to 2026 to 2030, safe driving taxi become commonplace in major US cities. Safe driving delivery vehicles become more widely adopted by businesses. Safe driving cars begin to be sold to consumers. Government begin to implement regulation to govern the use of safe driving. Mm -hmm. Let's see the other one. 2031, 2035, the numbers of safe driving cars on the road increase rapidly. Safe driving cars become more affordable and accessible to consumers. Traffic congestion and accident begin to decline significantly. This is, uh, it is uh, 
it is uh, 12 years from now. 12 years from now, they are stating that traffic congestion and accident decline because of self-driving cars. Very important. Uh -huh. Now let's see. This is not too much that it is revealing, but it is something. Now they say 2036 and 2040, it is from now 20 years almost, self-driving cars become a dominant mode of transportation in major US cities. Traffic congestion and accidents are virtually eliminated. There is no traffic congestion and there is self-driving cars have a major impact on the economy, creating new jobs and industry. Mm -hmm. They are replacing everything. They are replacing those, those driven cars. So this is just a general timeline and the specific pace of progress will depend on a number of factors such as technological advancement, government regulations and public acceptance. However, it is clear that self-driving cars have the potential to revolutionize, to revolutionize transportation and make our roads safer and more efficient. So it is not avoidable they will replace driven taxis. Here are some additional steps that can make can be taken to accelerate the adoption of self-driving cars and reduce the traffic congestion and accidents. Let's see what it is. Mm -hmm. Government can offer incentives to businesses and consumers to purchase and use self-driving cars. Government can invest in research and development of self-driving cars technology. Government can work with private sector to develop standard and regulation for self-driving cars. Public education campaigns can be launched to increase awareness of the benefit of self-driving cars and address any safety concern. That is one. That is, that is what they say, it is an advice, yes, a recommendation. By taking this step, we can create a future where self-driving cars make our roads safer and more efficient for everyone. Uh -huh. Those are answer. So it is proving that self-driving car, he, from now to two years, it is more broad in USA and in 20 years, it will be a reality and everywhere self-driving cars will be replacing, will be already replaced. We have already, self-driving car will, will have already replaced the driven taxis because self-driving cars will be more secured. That is what it is saying. So let's see what I said. I said, thank you for informing me about self-driving cars and self-driving self -driving cars is part of auto automatic economy, which is taking place and self-driving cars are not the only thing planned plan to be promoted through AI industrial era or robotic era. The bionic industry is pro progressing and the humanoid robot industry is progressing. How long will it take before scientists produce a full bionic human? Are bionic human body parts produced now? How mm -hmm. all parts which make the human are then produced? How human ro humanoid robot will be complementary to uh, to bionic to to bionic human? Yes, to bionic human. That is a question again. And the what else? Please give me a progressive plan with timeline where bionic human will be a reality and where we human humans will be transhuman humans will be transhuman let's see let's see what gives mm -hmm. let's see uh -huh. yeah, you have to scroll over more down yes the timeline for the development of full bionic human is difficult to predict but it is likely that it will take several decades there are numbers of challenges that need to be addressed before this can be achieved, including developing a bionic body part that are functioning and durable as natural body parts. That are, that, sorry, developing bionic body parts that are functional and durable as natural body parts. That is the initial. Yeah, you can't know, but certain things are not revealed. Interfacing bionic body parts with human nervous system so that they can be controlled by the user. This is already done. It is at a big percentage, like 80%. Mm -hmm. 
making bionic body parts affordable and accessible to everyone. This is uh, very tricky because minerals are expensive. Mm, I don't know where they will get them. Despite these challenges, sig significant progress is being made in development of bionic technology. However, even if I'm saying that mm, minerals are expensive, uh, uh, transhuman, let me define first transhuman. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Research before I, I will define when I finish this paragraph. Researchers have already developed bionic limbs that can allow a petite to walk, run, and, and even play sports. Bionic plants are also being developed to help people with other disabilities, such as paralysis and blindness. Mm -hmm. Now, before I go further, I have to define what is transhuman. And I have to tell you, why do we have to say bionic? Why do we have to say human have to be transhuman? Uh -huh. Transhuman, transhuman, uh, transhuman states is to be a transhuman is when a human being is modified, whether by using uh, artificial intelligence combined with uh, electronic and uh, other, other, even, 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 uh, even genetic engineering, which can modify by synthesizing the body parts or replacing everything or putting the human being into a state where he's capable of things that he couldn't do as a normal human being, a natural human being. It means transhuman are superhuman. Transhuman are human who, who can't die even, who can't die. Transhuman are human made of other parts which are not organic. Transhuman is an advanced human being which is capable of doing things that human being can do. That is transhuman. So now let's see why human why human being need to be transhuman. Uh -huh. This is a, you can't avoid it if we are going to the future. You can't avoid it. But uh, first, I have to tell you why transhuman are cheaper than than organic human being. Organic human being, they need food, they need clothes, they need all facilities, many things, many things, many different things which are very important for their survival. And uh, you can go through Maslow, um, Maslow pyramid of needs. You can see all the needs that a human being needs, including food, clothes, shelter, water, air, air oxygen to, to breathe, okay? And, and uh, yeah, entertainment, sex, and uh, yeah, jobs, jobs, and uh, even even uh, even things which are additional like pleasure, pleasure, like to be honored, and all those things, all those things. There are a list of long list of needs that human being that are needed, which make human being, organic human being, uh, very expensive. But why do we say that now? Uh, 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 that that uh, transhuman are, are cheaper. Transhuman they are cheaper because they have they they have they don't need food. For instance, they don't need food that human consume. Uh, and the other thing is the food that we produce is is easily produced. But as we keep digging into the soil, the soil uses its nutrient and it produce the same food in the future, it will be very expensive, very expensive that not everybody can afford it. So food will be requiring to, to, to inject certain minerals and organic, organic materials, which will be not very available. And this process will be more expensive than to be choosing to be, uh, to be transhuman. And as I said, transhuman, they don't need clothes, they don't need, they don't, don't need food, sometimes they don't need shelter, they don't need all those privileges and, and consumed products that human being needs. And the other thing is transhuman can transhuman can travel very far. That is space exploration. Human can't go far a very long distance through space exploration. The space exploration for human is very, very short 
The farthest we can go, it is to Mars, which lasts six months. And when you come, you are very weak, you are affected by race, and you can't, we have not yet even sent a human to Mars, which is taking a long, 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 long duration of time to, real, to make it a, real, a reality. But the other thing is, uh, between, let me tell you, let me tell you, between uh, one light year, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one light year, mm -hmm. one light year is uh, one light year is a distance between between uh, space and stars. It is a way of making simple the distance between us and stars, between us and the sun, and between us with other stars. So with other stars. So one light year is is one million is 10 million millions kilometers what does this means it, it means it means between our sun and another nearest star there are four light years four light years okay four light years and okay a spaceship which can travel a human to a, a very close a very close as uh, a very close a, a very close moon, which is our moon, it takes three days. And three days, it travel 400,000 400, kilometers, 400,000 kilometers. So the spaceship that we have, it can, tra it can, it can travel 400,000 kilometers. So if, if we use the same, the same ship, it can travel, it can travel, it can travel, it can travel one light year. It can travel one light year, 140, mm -hmm, 140,000, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 140 million days to finish, to finish one light year. The same spaceship, if we use the, uh, the spaceship that we use nowadays, it requires 140 million days to finish one light year, okay? And this means, if it is those days, this means 383,561 3, years, let me repeat, 383,561 years, let me repeat, 383,561 years to travel from one light year from, from from in a distance of one light year so if it, one 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 the star which is near us is four light years four light years the very star, the star which is near our our sun which we have to 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 explore to reach to that it will require four times four times that that years it means you you take 383 5,383,561 years times four. And then you get the distance, which is like one, me, 12, it is like mm -hmm, 12, 12 million years, 12 million years. That is, the, this, that is the time that you have to travel from our star to the nearest star. And that is the task that we should do in the in the in the very nearest time that we can do you see how it is very long who wh which human being can travel why uh, can travel one 12 million years it's impossible 12 million years it's impossible to travel 12 million years you can't exist you can't live you, you know, after 100 years you are dead and things can't progress so and the 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 universe itself it is made of billions of stars you understand the billions of stars and that is how the uh, transhuman need to be there so that they can take over over and replace organic human in space exploration cooperating with robotic humanoid robots humanoid robots so let's continue as it co continue to tell us it tells us humanoid robots could play a complementary role in bionic to bionic humans in future 
For example, humanoid robot could be used to perform dangerous and or difficult tasks that would be too risky for human. They could also be used to provide companionship and care for elderly and disabled people. Mm -hmm. Now let's see the timeline. Here's a, here is a, a possible timeline for the development of bionic humans and transhumans. Mm -hmm. 2023, 2025, bionic limbs and other implants become more advanced and affordable. Mm -hmm. Bionic limbs and other implants become more advanced and affordable in two years. That is what it is estimating. In also, humanoid robots become more sophisticated and capable. See, it is not specifying, but let's see. Uh -huh. 2026, 2030, bionic implants are used to treat wide range disabilities and medical conditions. Mm -hmm. Humanoid robots are used in wide range of commercial and industrial applications. That is also the other thing. Mm -hmm. 2000, 2031, 2035, Bionic implants become so advanced that they are indistinguishable from natural body part. Oh, in it is in 13 years to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Humanoid robots become so sophisticated that they can pass for human. Mm -hmm. In 13 years, 13 years to come, this will happen. Let's see now in 20 years to come, bionic human become a reality, bionic humans become a reality, transhumanism become mainstream movements. Mm -hmm. This is just a general timeline and the specific pace of progress will depend on a number of factors such as technological advancement, government regulation and public acceptance. However, it is clear that bionic humans and transhumanism are the future. Mm -hmm. You can't avoid it. It is important to note that there are both ethical and social implications to consider when developing and deploying bionic humans and humanoid robots. For example, we need to consider who will have access to this technology and how it will be used. We also need to consider the potential impact of this, this technology on the job, markets, and social structure. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. It is important to have a public conversation about this issue before this technology becomes widely available. We need to develop ethical guidelines and regulations to ensure that this technology is used for good. It is probable that in 2040, 2040 we will have, and that is my question again, it is probable that in 2040, we will have transhumans among us. How will this affect our job market, frankly speaking? What should you advise me to study, which can be used for, which can be used for when transhuman takes our jobs and humanoid robots as well? What will be the consequences on food production if the majority of the population prefer to be transhuman? They don't need too much food or no food because it is more cheaper. What will be the future of housing, cities, and economy structure? Give me a new picture of new economy structure. What should I do now? Mm. That is what was that is was the objective of writing this uh, these prompts and questioning. So let's see what it gives. Mm -hmm. The impact of transhumans and humanoid robots on the job market, food production, housing, cities, and economy structure is a complex and multifaceted issue. Uh -huh. First, job market. Transhuman and humanoid robots are likely to have significant impact on the job market. Many jobs that are currently performed by humans could be automated by robots or taken over by transhumans with the next abilities. This could lead to widespread, to widespread employment and social unrest. Very important. Mm -hmm. However, it is important to know that, the, that new jobs will also be created as a result of the development of transhumanism and robotics. For example, there will be a need for people to design, build, and maintain transhuman implant and the humanoid robot to repair those 
those new kind of beings. There will be also there will also be a need for people to develop and implement new laws and regulation to govern the use of this technology, food production. Mm. Yeah, you are jumping it, but. Mm -hmm. Food mm -hmm. In major, in majority, the population prefer to be, tra if the majority of the population prefer to be transhuman, this could have a significant impact on food production. Transhumans may not need as much food as human, or they may not need any food at all. This could lead to decrease in demand for food, which could have a negative impact on farmers and the food industry. However, it is also possible that transhuman will develop a new innovative ways to produce food. For example, they may be able to develop new type of crops that are more nutritious and less resource intensive to, to produce. They may also be able to develop new ways to grow food in urban areas. Mm -hmm. Housing, cities, and the economy structure. The rise of transhumans and humanoid robots is likely to have a significant impact on housing, cities, and the economy structure. For example, if, if, if transhumans do not need as much as food, as much food or shelter as human, this could, use, could lead to a decrease in the demand for housing and other essential goods and services. This could have a negative impact on the economy. Huh? Mm -hmm. However, it is also possible that transhuman will create a new industries and market. For example, there may be a demand for new product and service that are specifically designed for transhuman, trans, trans, that are specifically designed for transhuman. Transhumans may also be able to develop new ways to generate wealth and improve the quality of life for everyone new picture of new economy structure. Here it didn't give me something specific. I will jump it. So what should I do? That is my question. If you are concerned about the impact of transhuman and humanoid robot on the job market and the economy, the best thing, thing you can do is to educate yourself about this technology. Learn about the potential benefit and risk of transhumanism and robotics. Also think about how you can develop skills that will be in demand in the future economy. Some skills that are likely to be in demand in the future economy include creativity and innovation, problem solving and critical thinking, communication and collaboration, adaptability and resilience, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. That is it. You should also consider the you should also consider developing skills that are specific to your to your chosen field. For example, if you are interested in working in the field of transhumanism, you should develop skills in biology, engineering, and computer science. It is also important to remember that the rise of transhuman and humanoid robots is not necessarily a bad thing. This technology has the potential to improve the quality of life for everyone. However, it is important to be prepared for the potential challenges and disruptions that this technology could bring. Yeah. So that was my interest so that I can know what to do because things are not easy and things are terrifying. So before I say goodbye to you, <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye to you. Please check, uh, please like my channel, YouTube channel and uh, subscribe to it. And uh, mm -hmm. and share it with your friend. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Goodbye, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm saying goodbye, but I'm still there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I'm leaving now. Let's see. It's mm -hmm. goodbye. Bye, my friends. Bye. Goodbye.